Hello, this is uh, Euro PCR 2018 TV. I am Flavio Ribicchini from the Division of Cardiology of the University of Verona in, in Italy. And uh, now we are going to talk about the highlights of this uh, course 2018 related to the coronary interventions. I have with me here two very expert, brilliant and young uh, colleagues. One is uh, Davide Capodanno from the University of Catania in Sicily and uh, Chris Cook from the Imperial College in London. Hi, Flavio. Welcome. So guys, we have some important news to share with our colleagues and uh, I want you, the experts, to comment on uh, basically three studies that have been presented during this course in Paris this year. Davide, a very discussed and uh, actual uh, trial which is Orbita, which has been published last year in Lancet, a lot of discussion. Now we have a sub-analysis of a specific question, which is the physiologically guided patients. Yeah, that was a highly anticipated sub-analysis because in the immediate aftermath of Orbita, some says, okay, some of the lesions were uh, FFR or IFR non-significant, so you diluted the effect which is not the case because uh, the investigators were blinded and all the patients, uh, almost all of the patients, had already uh, positive stress tests or some uh, non-invasive uh, ischemia assessment. But this analysis was very interesting and provocative, I would say, because they looked at the relationship between this uh, value that the investigators didn't know at the time of uh, PCI and uh, the relief from ischemia or the relief from symptoms. And what they showed was basically that uh, there was no association, actually, at all total disconnection between uh, the physiology assessment value and the uh, angina relief uh, while there was a connection with the uh, ischemia as assessed by the stress uh, dobutamine uh, test. So I think uh, that's very important because it speaks about the interplay between uh, angina, ischemia, and so we realize with this data that uh, the things are much more complex than uh, we typically think. Your personal interpretation of this data, we didn't like this trial that much. Do we like it a little bit more or even less now? Well, you know, uh, they uh, disclosed the one end point that for sure interventionists will like, which is freedom from angina. And so they concluded that for this specific end point, uh, there is uh, an NNT of five with PCI. So uh, PCI is very effective in improving freedom from angina. And I think uh, this is uh, nice to see for patients, not only for uh, doctors. And uh, the other important uh, take of the trial is that uh, you have uh, really to believe that PCI improve ischemia, that was shown already in the Lancet paper, while when you try to predict the relief from angina, then things become uh, complex. They have done uh, a good job in the analysis, I believe, because with only 200 patients, you are always exposed to the risk of being uh, with the low power, but actually they use uh, FFR and IFR as continuous variable yeah. and uh, use methodology that preserves some precision, so I think the data are uh, quite interesting and worthy of... Uh, yeah, we like comments. it a little a bit more then? So basically they use an analysis which is called the analysis of variance. Mm -hmm. And so one of the questions that emerged during the uh, presentation of the trial was, uh, okay, this uh, makes sense, uh, especially because FFR is not just a cutoff, uh, no. so that's very important. But at the same time, uh, we asked uh, the uh, presenter, uh, Dr. Rasha Alami, did you also look at the dichotomy uh, according to the traditional thresholds of uh, IFR and FFR, and they provided in their publication uh, in the appendix uh, all the values that Good. you can see in order to understand uh, what is going on, and everything was consistent with the general message. Right. Thank you. Chris. My take-home messages? Well, of course, I think it's a great trial. It's from my institution and with uh, co-investigators. Uh, and I think it's a really important trial because it's a data set we simply have not had up mm -hmm. until now. My key take-home messages uh, echo those of Davide. Firstly, PCI is clearly very good mm -hmm. for ischemia resolution, mm -hmm. but what Orbiter tells us is that translating that improvement, that definitive improvement in ischemia into improved exercise time is a difficult process no. and not as simple as perhaps we or our patients had thought. And there is an added placebo element, mm -hmm. but again, that is something that can inform us as physicians, mm -hmm. and we can make sure we incorporate that whenever we're discussing with our patients. Good. And in this controversial field of the usefulness of PCI in stable patients, we have very important data 
simultaneously published in the New England together with a presentation at PCR regarding the long-term five years follow-up of the famed two trials. Abs Tell us about it. Absolutely, Flavio. So we've talked about orbiter and ischemia resolution and symptoms. We're now moving to our second topic of discussion, which, as you say, is the five-year outcome data from the FAME2 study, which, of course, was an FFR-guided versus optimal medical therapy randomized controlled trial. And what we can now see at the five-year data is that those patients who firstly were deferred on the back of a negative FFR did very well. In the patients that were randomized to PCI, what we can see consistently is a continued improved major adverse cardiac event rate. Now, originally, we could only see this powered predominantly by the urgent revascularizations, which is a problem in an unblinded cohort. But the data that we saw presented at EuroPCR 2018 shows a signal for reduction in myocardial infarction including spontaneous myocardial infarction. And that is a hard endpoint Absolutely. that we really haven't seen before in this stable coronary disease group of patients. So, very good news for interventions. Absolutely, and very good news for physiology-guided intervention. And the speaker, later on in the session, brought together a meta-analysis of the FFR-guided studies, and they showed homogeneous treatment effect, again showing a reduction in the hard outcomes of death and MI, which was powered predominantly by a reduction in myocardial infarction. Very, very important data, very important data. Guys, so far I have understood what you have said. We are talking about interventions, physiology, symptoms, table angina, but there is a trial, there is another study that has been presented in these days in, in Paris, which is the Syntax 3. This sounds to me a little bit like science fiction medicine, so I ask you to explain to our colleague what it is about. So this was a study where, in fact, uh, Patrick Saroyce, the, uh, the great master of uh, introducing new topics to our field, actually randomized the heart team decision regarding patients with uh, complex coronary disease. And what they did was that they allowed patients to undergo conventional invasive coronary angiography. Mm -hmm. And then patients also had CT coronary angiography, and a subsection of those had FFR CT as well. And, then, uh, and the treatment was based on the non-invasive assessment? So the treatment really was to decide whether or not the patient was more suitable for surgery as the revascularization, okay. or more suitable for PCI, or indeed that they weren't quite sure. And wow. what they showed was that actually, with an invasive angiogram or a non-invasive CT scan, the heart team was able to make their decisions with almost complete agreement. Same decision. So you don't need to do angiography anymore in an invasive fashion, according to this trial. Well, uh, let's see what Davide has to say on that topic. Ah. Oh, thank you for the <laughs> question. Actually, this is uh, the potential implication. So if uh, we believe this data, this means that maybe in the future the surgeons will accept to operate the patients directly based on uh, the response of the CT uh, plus FFR without going for cut in order to define the anatomy. Of course, uh, I would be very curious to know the opinion of surgeons because we know that CT has now a great <coughs> resolution, but perhaps uh, uh, to see the distality of the vessel is not so easy, like for coronary angiography. So of course, it's a first uh, uh, step, and I think it would be interesting to look also at the outcome data, because I know that this will be the new challenge, of course, for these uh, investigators. We want to see that this methodology is at least uh, as safe uh, as the standard of care but uh, anyway the implication of course is uh, interesting they call the trial uh, syntax 3 revolution mm -hmm. and uh, this tells of how much they <coughs> believe that this will be a uh, true revolution time will tell very well I think this is fascinating fascinating because it's changed a little bit the way we have been working and thinking and this is the continuous evolution of uh, cardiology and interventional cardiology maybe we will have more time to do other things and we always find something new to do so I think uh, time will tell as you said and this is uh, some of the most important things we have heard at uh, PCR to th 2018 this year Thank you, thank you very much for sharing these comments with all our community and I hope you have enjoyed the meeting yourself and to have you here again back soon. Thank you everybody for hearing. Goodbye.